All right, are your scalene muscles an accessory muscle or a breathing muscle? And what are the movements of ribs 11 and 12? Can Pilates help with cases of MS? And can you guys do another knee lift exercise? Welcome to Upside Down Pilates. Lisa here, and I have brought Herman with me today. So those are the questions we're going to answer. Let's get to it. Eileen from Facebook writes, Hi Lisa, hope you are well. Judging by your Facebook posts, you are very busy. Yes, I'm doing fabulous, and yes, I'm very, very, very busy. Let's see, I have a breathing question for you. It seems most other people consider the scalene muscles uh, as an accessory muscle to quiet inspiration, yet Irene seems to put them alongside the diaphragm and intercostals. Do you recall if she has ever talked about that? I noticed the Newman book uh, says that too. So Irene is me and Eileen's mentor, Irene Dowd. We love her very much. Um, in my recollection of studying with her, she has grouped them the same place as the Newman book. Uh, the Newman book is another fabulous anatomy, kinesiology, biomechanics book to get in and read. Um, so today what I can talk about is what they are um, and how I feel about them in my work that what I do. Can't really speak for her, but yes, you are right. And she puts them with the other um, muscles of respiration, which is where I put them in because they're really not big enough to do much of anything other than help lift your head side a little bit, but you need other muscles to help with that, okay? So let's look at Herman. These are our scalene group. So uh, the scalene in the front, this is the anterior scalene. It goes, it really connects from the transverse process, some of the transverse process, I'm not gonna get super detailed right now, to either the top rib, the first rib, or the second rib. The medial scalene goes from here, and then the posterior scalene goes down here, all right? So when I look at a muscle, I look at how it contracts, all right? We know that muscles contract from one end to the other end and they come together. If you stabilize one end, it, the other will move to it. And if you stabilize the other end, this end will move to it. So what is this muscle gonna do? It's gonna take the neck and either bring it down towards the ribs or it's gonna take the ribs and bring it up towards the neck, okay? we got a lot of joints in here, so your head may be moving side to side or not, right? Because we can create some imbalances in there. So, these muscles aren't that incredibly big, so they're not going to be doing massive heavy weight lifting. Our head is, is pretty heavy, 10 to 20 pounds, depending on how big you are. Um, so, my instinct is that these are going to help with respiration so it's going to help lift the ribs up and eccentrically lower them down in breathing if you're standing upright now if you are uh, it may the anterior scalene eye may help with flexion a little bit um, the mid scalene eye are going to help with um, lateral flexion in the cervical spine if you're lying sideline for example and then the posterior is gonna help with uh, you know, lateral flexion as well as a bit of extension, like if you're going up and back against gravity. All right, so that's what I'm gonna say about the scalene eye. I am gonna put them in with respiratory uh, muscles. Um, and I don't wanna, I don't think any muscle is accessory. I think they're all important for different reasons, okay? Um, but, you know, that's where it gets grouped together so people have an easier time understanding them. The muscle is not set up for big power moves, so my guess is it's helping elevating and slowly depressing the rib cage along with the intercostals and then the diaphragm sucking everything in. And we have so many other breathing muscles that go along with all of that. So I'm gonna say they go with breathing and with those other movements that uh, I spoke of. Hope that helps. 
Next question, still from Eileen. She asks, uh, also, does Irene talk about the specific movement of the ribs 11 and 12 at all? Yes, she did go into that last year, a couple years ago, quite in depth. Apparently, they call them caliper ribs and compare their motion to a uh, caliper. Uh, what are your thoughts? Okay, so, yes, the, what happens at the ribs while we breathe is they expand out and up and down. So a caliper is a tool that has a handle and it goes up and down like this. So that's what they're referring to. Um, and so our ribs move like a, uh, a handle on a bucket or like a bird's wings flying out. So they go up and down and up and down. All right. Um, I don't know if you can see. I'm going to pull this back. So here is our 12th floating rib and then our 11th rib. They're going to do the same thing. Uh, they have a little bit, all of our ribs have a little bit of rotation as they flare. Okay, so inside the uh, joint that connects the uh, transverse process and our uh, rib bone, um, the the arthrokinematics that happen is one of them is a spin. They do it like a little slide and a spin. So the ribs are the 12, 11th and 12th, what you're specifically talking about. They're going to kind of do a roll and a slide at the same time as it's lifting up and down. So this will do roll and slide this way, and this is gonna do roll and slide this way. Same thing really with all of them. So yes, and that is what it's referring to. And there's tons and tons of muscles that help uh, support that. I hope that explains that. Herman's doing a really good job today. Okay, next question. June from Facebook asks, can Pilates help with cases of MS? So if you don't know what MS is, MS stands for multiple sclerosis. And what happens is in our body, our immune system starts to attack the myelin sheath surrounding the nerves, um, and there's plaques in the brain and things that happen. So uh, last week I spoke of osteoarthritis or arthrosis, and um, the same, it's basically the same answer. So multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune condition. Uh, so Pilates in itself cannot heal an autoimmune condition. An autoimmune condition is caused by a leaky gut and microbiome um, dysbiosis. So to do that, to fix MS in that way, you need to heal and seal the leaky gut, repopulate it with good bacteria, and then reset the immune system so that the immune system stops attacking your myelin sheath. Um, what Pilates can be very helpful for is modifying exercises so people with MS can continue to exercise um, if they start to lose balance or if like they're in pain, you can use other parts of the body. There's so many different ways that you can modify to help someone with MS. Um, and it's one of those things where the more um, exercise and activity you can keep going, even if you're uh, not feeling so great, the better off you're going to feel all the way around. And that helps other things get better, which can help support um, MS either going into remission um, or not being as much of a problem as it is because you have that energy of exercise behind it. So uh, one of the big problems with MS after the long haul becomes balance and just muscle, muscle strength because the nerves, the myelin sheath starts to break down, so getting the information from your brain to your muscles uh, can start to become challenging and then muscles stop working so well. Um, so you can really break things down to the strength level, um, the coordination level, and all of those different things when working with someone who has MS. Um, the biggest thing you need to be concerned of with someone is their balance. I did have a client uh, many, many years ago, probably 17, 18 years ago now, and she had severe MS, and we were able to get her strong enough and balanced enough that she could uh, 
balance on the balance ball and be able to do seated exercises on the balance ball, which really helped with her balance. That is not where we started, okay? Um, but yes, MS is very uh, difficult to deal with and Pilates can be a just fabulous way to be able to modify everything so that the person who has MS can continue to exercise regardless of what's going on in the rest of their body. All right, last question. Cody from YouTube asks, can you guys do another knee lift exercise? And I said, of course we can. So a knee lift exercise, he, I believe, is refer he or she is referring to an exercise to strengthen the vastus medialis uh, that connects into the patella. Oftentimes the patella uh, will start sliding in one direction or the other if the vastus medialis is uh, weak. So these types of knee lift exercises will um, help to stabilize the patella. So let me talk a little bit about that. Herman can go away for a moment. Herman's leg separate right now. So here is our knee. This is our tibia, the tibial plateau. This is our femur bone. This is where the rolling and sliding happens. In between there is our meniscus, our ACL, our PCL, and our collateral ligaments hold this all together. This is our fabulous little patella. All right, and it's held on by our rectus femoris goes down through here into a tendon, so that's the patellar tendon, and then it connects this bit of the patella into the front of the knee over here, okay? When the knee moves like this, there is a roll and a slide and a little bit of a rotation. It's called the screw home mechanism in the knee that goes as it goes back and forth like this. So when you're kneeling, you're actually all the way down kneeling on this part which is kind of gross to think of, but that's so cute. dokie So I'm gonna put um, Herman's tibia down. So the vastus medialis is, uh, connects over here and it connects onto your patella over here. And what it does is it helps to keep the patella pulled up and in line in between this little groove. Okay, so the patella would stay here, and then this is supposed to move back and forth in here as it goes, all right? If the VMO is weak, it'll start sliding around side side, and you'll get things, diagnoses like chondromalacia or patellar tracking syndrome. Uh, it, all that's really happening is your VMO is weak uh, in one regards. So let me show you some knee exercises and then I will explain other issues that come along with that, all right? So the first exercise I'm gonna show you is sexy knees. All you really do is pull up your uh, VMO muscle and try and get it to work, okay? So I'm gonna hop up over here and I hope you can hear me. Here's my knee, so I'm going to pull up my leggings here, and your kneecap is right here. All you're going to do is feel like you pull your quadricep muscles up, and then release. And pull the quadricep muscles up, and release. So as you're doing this, you really want to keep your knees from locking back in hyperextension. I don't know if you can see that. I've trained them so well, they don't hyperextend as much as they used to. But the whole time that you're lifting the kneecap with the quads, you just want to keep your knee in its neutral alignment the best that you can, okay? So I recommend with the, this particular exercise, um, if you have a lazy VMO, doing this 10, 20 times um, in a row, three times a day to help get it to start strengthening up. Okay, so that's exercise number one. I love that one. Now, that can be really hard to get going if it's lazy. So there are techniques to get those muscles going, but I'm not gonna go into all that detail right now. The next exercise that I'll show you um, 
is just extending your leg bone, your tibia, your lower leg, um, out straight, holding it for three counts, and then slowly lowering it for three counts, all right? Now you can do this without a ball, but we're gonna do it with the ball, because um, that helps the co-contraction of your hamstrings in the back so that you don't go into hyperextension. If you go back into hyperextension, your BMO is gonna, and the other quad muscles are gonna actually turn off. Um, that's just part of how we are as humans so that we can stand for long periods of time without all that extra uh, muscular work, all right? You're gonna take a ball, and I'll show you this way, and put it under your knee. You could also use a beach towel, or whatever you have at home. Sit up as tall as you can, and all you're gonna do is pull your quadriceps up and extend your lower leg as much as you can, keeping your pelvis in neutral. You can hold for three counts. Three, two, one. And then you're gonna slowly lower it down for three counts. Three, two, one. Again, you lift it up one, and you're gonna hold three, two, one, and slowly lower it down. Two, one. Do a couple more. Lift it up one, hold it three, two, one, and slowly lower it down. Two, one. I'll show one more time. Lift it up one, hold it three, two. One, and then slowly lower it down. Two, one. Fabulous. So, you can do that one 10 rounds on each leg. Always do both legs. Um, you don't want to get in the habit of only doing one leg. I've had a lot of people that come to me after they've done PT and they do all their exercises only on one leg and they haven't done the other. And it's just the two legs are very, very different, and that starts to create issues in the spine. So we don't want to end up there. Do all your exercises on both sides, regardless if one is broken or not. All right? Now we're moving into the last exercise I wanted to show you. So this is doing the sexy knees, but with um, a little bit of resistance. And this would be the next step if you can get the... Uh, BMO working and a little bit of strength, then you can start adding a little bit of resistance. So, I'll bring this back over. All you're gonna do is, here's our patella. You're gonna just take your fingers up on a diagonal and give a little push. So the VMO goes down here and then it wraps around and connects in. So you wanna go on that line of action of wrapping around and connecting in. So you'll be kind of on this diagonal and you're gonna push down on the patella gently, not very crazy here. And as you push down, then you're gonna use your quad muscle to try and resist and pull into the fingertips. Okay, let me show you. into it and then releasing this time you'd be pushing into it and then keeping the tension as you slowly lower the quadricep down or the patella down that's more advanced you don't want to be doing that with someone who's like in pain okay because that could make it worse and push their kneecap off in the wrong direction I'm gonna throw this to you so um, we in uh, medicine and um, 
fitness training and diet and all these different things have really gotten to focusing on one thing at a time, which is really great. So the knee, we would focus on the knee if you're having patellar tracking syndromes, but um, it's never just the knee. The knee is often the breaking point. So the real problem is actually happening up in the hip or it's happening down in the foot. And the result of what you're doing is you're having knee problems. So one step of this game in dealing with patellar tracking syndrome or in dealing with um, chondromalacia is going to be to strengthen up the VNO, VMO, vastus medialis obliquus to be exact. The other step is going to be making sure that you have the proper biomechanics going on in your foot and that the intrinsic muscles of your feet are strong as well as the proper biomechanics in your hip and the six deep lateral rotators in your hip are working properly and that all your glutes, your glute max, your glute medius, and your glute minimus are also working properly. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. All right, I will leave links for bits of information that will help with this. Um, do you have a question? If you do, please leave it in the comments below or you can message it to me or you can email it to me and I'm gonna try and keep answering these questions. Um, it's a bit fun for me and I think you all are coming up with some great questions and I'm here to help and be as um, of service to you and your knowledge base as much as I can. And I will also leave that link to our neuromuscular reeducation teacher training course that is all online. Um, that will be coming up this January. Um, I'll leave the link for you to check out more information if you're interested in that. All right, have a great day and I'll see you next week. Aloha.